Our verse today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. This last part of chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians speaks about the coming of the Lord. Paul teaches that Jesus will return in glory and that when Jesus comes, those who are alive will be taken up in the clouds to meet the Lord. What about those who have died before us? Paul says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For that reason, he tells the Thessalonians, not to mourn or grieve as others. Let us examine two crucial points here. What does Paul mean by those who are asleep? And then, do not grieve as others. Who are these others? Death was once considered a terrible thing, not just a separation, but the end of life. In the ancient Near East, as one author writes, death was called the land of no return and was viewed as an inescapable underworld prison. The Old Testament pictures the realm of death or Sheol as being under the earth comparing its entrance to a deep pit. Psalm 88, 4-6 Those who descend into this subterranean region are cut off from God's mighty deeds and from the worshipping community of faith. Psalm 6, verse 5, Psalm 30, verse 9, 88, verse 10 to 12, and Isaiah 38, verse 18. The Bible sees death as an enemy. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 28. But Jesus is teaching change the meaning of death. He tells those making commotion at Jairus' daughter's death that the girl was not dead but asleep. Mark 5, 39. Paul's teaching is based on this understanding that death is only a passage from this life to another life. One sleeps and wakes up in another life. You can read Acts chapter 7, verse 60. Therefore, those who have died only go to sleep because they do not die eternally Paul tells the Thessalonians not to grieve like other people who have no hope in the resurrection of the dead. Who are these others? In a general sense, we can say Paul has in mind unbelievers, those who do not believe in God or the resurrection. But in the context, Paul speaks specifically to the Greek converts in Thessalonica as he would speak to other Greek converts. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, Ephesians 2, 11 to 13. In other words, Paul is saying to the Greek converts, they are fortunate, they have been brought close to Christ, in contrast to the others who still do not believe in God or the resurrection. In the Old Testament, we have an example of one who knew how to grieve as one who believed in God. When the child born to David by Beersheba out of adultery was sick, he prayed that the child should live. But when the child died, David got up, and here was his response. While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Second Samuel chapter 12, 22-23 Death is not an easy thing to bear. In the last year, many people have lost their loved ones, especially to COVID. What can we say to them? It is hard to console people who are grieving. While we tell them there is the hope of another life for their loved ones, let us keep them in our prayers. Let us keep those who have died recently in our prayers, those who have died because of natural disasters, those who have died because of terrorist attacks, banditry, and all others, let us keep them in our prayers and pray for their loved ones, especially those who are grieving terribly at this time. Lord, be with all those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones at this time. Amen. God bless you and I wish you a lovely day.